a lot of all of the money is going to like fundraising. Um, just to kind of uh, tag on the the on the report that you put out last year, there was a bottom ten percentage. Um, uh, bottom ten uh, fundraising fund, fundraisers, and one of those was like negative eighty three percent. How does that how does that happen for a fundraiser that that they raise dollars from our community and but they donate back what actually went to the, the organization was negative eighty three percent. A lot of people find that and question that, and it's it's um, it's really interesting. In this particular case, if I'm not mistaken, it was a, a, a five-year program where pledges are, are taken, so they they haven't actually collected the money. So over at some point, when the, all the money starts coming in, it'll be over 100 percent. So it's just a pledge program. Yes. At what point does the money start? I don't know. I mean, it's it's what a. If it never well, if it, it never, it, it could, um, you know how people are, I mean, they make a pledge and then they don't send it in. Um, they don't collect on the pledge. Right, so, it, I mean, that's something we'll have to wait and see. I don't, I don't know. But hopefully it will be within five years. Where, where would we be able to obtain that report? It's posted on our website. Um, on the Secretary of State's website, there's a menu that you can select the charities program, and it's under the fundraiser section. Um, or, excuse me, it's under the donor section. Okay. Sorry. What? I thought you were the. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you're It's on the donor section, and there's a. Uh, it says commercial fundraiser report. Let me give you an actual example. I have a client who, it's a small agency that works with people, uh, children with disabilities. And they get twenty thousand dollars a year from a professional fund uh, commercial fundraiser. And this language, by the way, is really important. I'm a fundraiser. Uh, fundraising is something we do at the nonprofit center, but I never touch the money. The money, I help the organization raise the money. The money goes directly from the donor to the charity, and that's not the group of people that Rebecca is talking about. If I were um, commercial fundraisers, are for-profit businesses. And they are the ones who call you up on the phone and want to sell you circus tickets or whatever. And don't you want to help the poor kids? And this client gets $20,000 a year. And she found out that, in fact, they were collecting $100,000 a year. And she was only seeing 20 of it. But she was unwilling to give it up because she couldn't face replacing that $20,000 contribution. So the donor thinks they're helping her organization and doesn't realize that two out of every ten bucks is all that they're getting. And that's why this is a really important program. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's an awareness, and it's not illegal. Mm -hmm. It's illegal if they lie to you, if they say, this is Jones, uh, you know, every I'm cent, working for, yeah. every cent that you give is going to go to the children, mm -hmm. and you find out later, 20 cents went. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's illegal, but it's not illegal that 20 cents go. Um, do, do you know off the top of your head, you gave me a, a sheet of paper that was talking about donor bill of rights. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, what types of things are, are, are on those? What, uh, somebody, someone was donating money to, um, um, to any uh, organization, uh, to any nonprofit. What, what would they expect, those types of things? Yeah, and is that right. a law or is that? Okay, but it's what you, it's ethics? It's the ethics mm -hmm. promulgated by the Association of Fundraising Professionals, which is an international organization for folks like me who do this in support of other organizations. The Donor Bill of Rights includes things like a donor has the right to see your financials anytime. By law, a donor can go in and say, I want to see your Form 990, and they have to hand it to you right now. I keep our stack. Nobody's ever come, but you want to come? They're there. <laughs> um, so, um, I, as a donor, I have the right to see the financials. As a donor, I have um, the expect. I have the right to expect that you will use my money the way you said you were going to use it. You can't use it for something else unless I tell you you can. Um, I have the right to anonymity if I want it. I have the right to communication about what you're doing on a regular basis, <coughs> and that's four out of six of them. Uh, like there, there are ten of them, and I. Well, um, I'd like to uh, uh, move on to uh, uh, 
uh, the, how the how the contracts are. Um, and there was um, uh, somebody from the city was going to be here, uh, but you know, so couldn't make it today. Um, but there's <laughs> saw the weather report. Yeah, saw the weather report. <laughs> But um, um, you know, and I and I was actually um, I'm glad Dr. Anderson was able to uh, make it. She. Uh, um, yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you you want to go up there? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I was actually going to uh, ask for those that, that for those that you that you know. Um, the, the city actually donates um, or provides funding for several nonprofits in, um, uh, in Tacoma. And, and what I kind of wanted to know was, um, uh, and, and the outputs are available, and, and con if, it's, if it's a contract, the contracts are available for, for a public review. But why would it be important for the community to know what those outputs are and, um, and uh, to be able to evaluate, have a community uh, evaluation or a community perspective on, um, why would it be important for us to know that to, in judging the effectiveness of nonprofits? And I was wondering if we could start with, uh, with you, Dr. Anderson. Well, we are a recipient of a city contract for a male involvement program. And the reason that the outputs are critical is that because, first of all, they're public dollars uh, funded by the city's tax base. And the outputs indicate if we are first meeting the goal that the city and, and the contractor, in this case the Urban League, has agreed upon. Secondly, how effectively we're doing that. And third, is it cost efficient and, and addressing the need or remediating the need that the contract was designed to do. And it's also a form of, in, in our particular case, we're moving to try to get established as a promising program. So it's very critical that we are consistent in every strategy or process that we use so that if it is being promising, it can be replicated. And the more efficient that we're able to do that, the greater population could be impacted and in communities similar to the ones that we're using the program. Um. Uh, it, and if you could um, take us a, a step further and kind of, um, would you be willing to kind of share uh, how you um, evaluate, how you do outputs and how that like the contract uh, stuff works? Or, you know, when, when, were you, uh, um, uh, do you have to provide what kind of outcomes you judge um, the effectiveness of your program on when you're applying for a contract from the city? Before the contract is approved by the city council. And what, what types of things like for the mail and what types of First of all, the city, well, all of Pierce County founders have a catalog of problem areas that they are, uh, that you're eligible to apply for funding. So if you pick a target el eligible area, it could be literacy, it could be youth, it could be education. In our particular case, um, the gang violence issue was promising, but one of the approaches that the city overall was using was suppression, law enforcement. And what we were proposing is that early intervention and prevention was more critical to reducing the long-term issues of gang violence than simply just dealing with suppression. In that regard, the health department approached the, the city and said that there are a number of evidence-based programs, which had already been validated as to be easily replicated and could address the target population. So there was functional family therapy, which is a clinical program where clinicians go into the home of referred persons. And then there's anger replacement therapy, ART, if you will, which is a small group interaction where kids are, are trained by uh, identify clinicians who act as facilitators and teach them anger replacement therapy. Our program and the logic behind our program is, is that the majority of the direct violence encounters were among the between youth of color, particularly males of color. And the thesis was that regardless of what types of behavioral interventions occurred, until we understood what were some of the underlying behavioral and social and cognitive issues that, that caused the conflict, then we were just going to have the program, it would just move around the city. So our program is designed to look at 